I'm going to assume that you have Docker installed and you have some basic understanding of Docker. So I have Visual Studio Code open and I'm in the Docker Compose.yaml file. First, we're gonna load ComaDB inside a Docker container without any authentication. Once that is successful, we'll start turning on the authentication. I'm pointing to the latest image. The latest image is from their GitHub page. This is the ChromaDB GitHub page and 0.5.2 is the latest. And the tag GitHub container registry image. This is where I'm getting the container image name from or the tag from. Okay, I'm just naming the uh, container. By default, ChromaDB runs on port 8000. A lot of other tools use the same port, so I don't wanna deal with the conflicts. So I'm gonna map port 8000 from within the container to port 8800 on my host system. Next, we pass in an environment file. Let me jump to that file. Inside the environment file, I'm turning off telemetry. I don't wanna send any statistics to the ChromaDB team. I'm turning on persistence. This will save the database onto disk and the location that I wanna save it to, slash chroma slash my underscore DB. This is inside the container, which I will create a volume and map to my local system. So in Docker Compose, I'm mapping my DB, this empty folder here, to the path inside the container. Okay, so we should be able to spin up this image on my terminal. I'm gonna do Docker Compose, up, detach mode, build the image. I already did a build prior, so some of these things are already on, downloaded on my system. All right, in Docker Desktop, this is the container that just got created. Let me click into it. And looking at the logs, everything looks good. As mentioned before, the Chroma DB service within the container is running on port 8000, which we mapped to 8800. Now let's see if we can connect to the container. This is one of my test files from my earlier videos. Let me do the imports. Uh, let me hide these things. Okay, connect with no authentication to localhost port 8800. Connect. Okay, it connected fine. We can look at the log on uh, Docker desktop here. We can see these last two uh, successful messages. I can go ahead and create a new collection and it's gonna be called my collection. You can see that the new database is being written inside the container, which is also mapped to my local folder. I'm gonna read the menu.csv file, which is here. I'm gonna just read this into memory. And then down here, we'll add all that into the database. Okay, now we can query the database. This is just a couple of queries that we're gonna run. It's not really important. This was from the past, let me clear it. I'll run it again, and it's able to query the database. Next, let's add authentication. I'm gonna hop over to my environment file. So we're gonna start with the simple case, which is to add token authentication to only one super user. So we're gonna enable the token authentication provider, and this is the token that we're gonna use. Obviously, uh, you should generate something much more complicated than this. We do have to rebuild the image since the environment file is passed in from uh, the build stage. So I'm gonna come down here and we'll build it again. Okay, let's check the log. Looks like it's okay. Now let me go back to my test file. If I try to connect with no authentication now, it should give me an error. Okay, cannot connect, are you sure it exists? So this message, not that helpful, but if we go to the back end, we can see the token authentication failed. Now let me expand this one. This one we're passing in a setting, and in the setting, we're enabling the token authentication, and we're passing in the token that would match the environment file. So test token. This should allow me to connect. Okay, connection is good. Get my collection. And since uh, we persisted the database, 
everything that we added should still be there. So let me clear the last query, query again. It's able to query the database. Now let's enable role-based authentication. We do need to pass in an additional file to the container. And this file is located in my config over here which I'm mapping to my container. We need to pass in a file that configures the roles and the file I got it from the ChromaDB GitHub example. The link is here. Let's see how to uh, interpret this file. Up here under resource type actions, these are all the possible actions that you can take against ChromaDB. For example, creating a new database, adding data to the collection or querying it. So you see this comment here, this is just for reference and that's exactly what this is for. This is just so you can use down here. Under the mapping, this is where you create the roles. So the admin can pretty much do all the actions that are available. And you have some other as well. Um, we can look at this read only one. This one can only query the collection. So down here, we create the users. There are two users defined here, the admin user and one for read only. The IDs doesn't seem to matter. What matters is the row. So we're giving it the row of admin, which should match admin here. And then we give it a custom token of course, you should make this complicated. And then for the read only, this one will match this row here and give it a good token as well. Also, make sure your tokens don't overlap because that's the only way ChromaDB can tell the users apart. Now that we have the users defined, we need to go to the environment file. Let me turn off the single user configuration and turn on the multi-user configuration. These configurations are found in this reference link up here. So we turn on the token authenticator and also we turn on the role-based authenticator. We point the configuration and the credential file to the one that we were just looking at, the YAML file. Okay, uh, everything should be ready. Let's rebuild the image. So notice that when we rebuild the image, we're getting a um, module not found error. Apparently there is some bug in 0.5.2. The bug has been fixed in 0.5.3. So we can try this. Let's rebuild. Check the log. Now we're good. You can see the role-based authentication is also enabled. Now I'll go back to my test file. If I try to connect with no authentication, it should fail. If I try to connect with a the previous single user authentication with a token that's not defined anymore, it should also fail. We can see from the error messages, the first one, no authentication was provided. The second one is invalid token. Now let me expand this one and compare to the the one before. We're still passing in the token authenticator, but now we're adding the role-based authenticator and we're passing in the token that should match the YAML file here. I'm passing in test token read only. So it should know that I'm only a read only user. Connect, connect is okay. Get the collection. Let's see what the error is. Looks like the user facing errors are not very useful, but you can see from the log here that it says access denied for user read only. That is because I'm calling a get or create collection, which either gets the collection or creates a collection if it doesn't exist. As a read only user, I don't have the ability to create collection. So if I just do, if I just call the get collection function, it should work and it did. Now, since all the data are already there, I should be able to query it now. And it works. We're good with role-based authentication. Now, before I go, let me show you one more thing. So let's say we don't have image 0.53 where they fixed the bug and we still had the bug from 0.52. Let me show it to you again. 
0.52 was pointing to some kind of dependency that was not included in the image. Obviously, that was a bug. Now, if you don't want to wait for the Chroma DB team to fix that, the way to deal with this is we're gonna build our own image. We're gonna use a, we're gonna have a new Docker file. In the new Docker file, we're pointing at 0.52, the bad one. In the Docker file, I'm going to do a pip install. It's gonna install from this requirement file, which points to the package that it was complaining about. I'm gonna point my build to this folder since the Docker file is in the same folder as my YAML file. And let's build it. You can see that it ran pip install and it installed whatever was in requirements.txt. And now it looks like it's able to start up fine. You can use this technique to bypass any future bugs or if you want to include other modules in the same image, you can just add it to requirements.txt. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. Thanks for watching.